Hello, everyone. I am really, really beyond thrilled to be talking to Passion Murray today. She's the co-founder of Detroit Dirt. She is an innovator. She's an environmentalist. She also is on a new Netflix documentary called Kiss the Ground. Your name, where does it come from? It's so beautiful. Thank you. My dad, um, at the time, my parents are not no longer together. My mom married my stepdad when I was five, but my dad he said that he wanted this name that represented love. Passion, this sounds really silly, but just so everybody can hear exactly what is compostable in terms of food matter. The myth is, oh, it's only organics, only uh, perishable items like your salad mixes and your fruits and your vegetables. Everything can be composted. What happens with meat and cheese is it's a longer process to break down. So they both require a different method of composting, but composting, it's, it happens naturally in yeah. the jungles, in the forest. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just that those processes are there organically, uh, where humans, we tend to throw things away or don't manage things properly. For me, just watching your trailer on composting that you can see on DetroitDirt.org, everybody, that really is super informative, crystal clear, and it gives you like this whole kind of circle of life and what happens. And it's also like fully star studded. But speaking of star studded, how did um, Kiss the Ground come about? Woody Harrelson, Patricia Arquette, Giselle Bündchen, Tom Brady, all um, educate us on in which ways the earth soil might be the way to combat climate change. Kiss the Ground, they're a great organization out of um, out of California. They had about five or six celebrities filming this, this um, soil story. Before that, the Ford ad came out. Why do I work so hard? For what? For this? For dirt? Other countries, they work. They stroll to the market and buy locally grown food. Locally. Why aren't we like that? Well, more and more of us are like that. That ad was about 60 seconds and it went viral in a couple of days. And that's really what catapulted me out into the world and, and allowed people to understand this platform of what I was involved in. And then Kiss the Ground came and other opportunities. That's exactly what's needed. You need the people like myself who have actually done the work, but you also need people who are brands themselves to help to push this. That's why yeah. this, interview, this interview with you is so important because oh. people will start to see that branding and relationships, we have to come together to start helping each other. Anybody in fashion and makeup right now that's actually investing in this is huge. And yes, we do need more people of color um, that are in communities globally doing this work as well. Yeah. Um, because they're out there, you know, yeah. but, but that's part of my job too, is yeah. as I get exposure to help others and, you know, pay it forward. That's, that's what it's about. Will you tell us a little bit about Detroit Dirt? Sure, sure. So uh, Detroit Dirt, I, I don't take full credit. I do credit my dad and uh, my grandparents and our family farm in Mississippi as having something to do with uh, my purpose within my journey. But the Detroit Dirt model um, was established about 12 years ago, and the focus was primarily to help with the carbon footprint of the city around waste reduction. Um, and the automotive community was already focusing on recycling, uh, but I wanted them to give me an opportunity to talk about uh, food waste. Uh, because it was one of those epidemics that we sometimes look past. My focus now is making sure that corporations and cities start looking at their waste streams. We got the Detroit Zoological Society and General Motors. We took uh, herbivore manure from the Detroit Zoo and food waste from General Motors. And we began to process and make compost with the community. And then when the word got out, uh, the urban farmers, a lot of them were purchasing it, gardeners and others in the city. And one thing led to another. So the motto, you know, basically was to provide resources uh, around farming, gardening, you know, planting trees and things of that nature. I mean, it's so incredible 
what you're doing and you're also bringing so much awareness to you know the effects of healthy soil you know and how much it can impact the climate i had no idea that that was they are so connected when you bury food waste it gives off greenhouse gases and oftentimes with composting um, if it's done properly we have an opportunity to take that greenhouse those greenhouse gases and redirect them so the carbon cycle gets uh, put back into the soil properly. Mm -hmm. um, because if food is just food waste or manure, it's just laying around and it's not processed, it's that gas is right coming off of the, uh, the fields or farms or wherever it is. And then that contributes to those greenhouse gases. So basically, um, if, you, if it's just food that's being thrown out together with all of the other trash in this system, then then this it's not being processed properly and it's not compostable and it's not helping the soil. It's harming. Yeah, yeah. And we've been we've been burying food waste in the landfills for for years, for decades. And um, a lot of waste companies, those that care. They're actually using technologies now to harness that gas. Um, but there's other technologies where you can actually make uh, biofuels and you can use it as an energy source as well. So it's not like we don't have the solutions. It's just the antiquated practices of, of farming and those of us who throw things away. Mm -hmm. You know, if we put it in perspective, especially pushing policy around this, um, yeah. there's, there's economic gain to it and there's an opportunity to build uh, a market around doing this, uh, the, in the correct way or processing it in the right way. I tell people all the time when I'm speaking at universities, I'm like, think of the acronym C and it's basically socially, economically, and environmentally. If we look at our systems and have systems thinking, and we basically take these processes and manage them properly, uh, we have an opportunity to help corporations with their bottom line. We have an opportunity to get farmers to practice um, different um, and redirect. And we also get to create these closed loop cycles where we're not wasting and throwing things away. We're truly impacting people, planet, the earth, all together with the right practices. When you're kind of just describing it to me, it's like, oh, it's a no brainer. What do you suggest, you know, that people can do as a beginning, as a starting point? First, I always tell uh, people to do an audit uh, themselves on their household, like what they're spending on a day to day, because oftentimes we, we consume a lot, especially as Americans. Um, it's just a proven fact. I think if, if people are really interested in helping, um, I think we should research and find out who's willing to take the compost or if there are recyclers in the area yeah. um, who can actually receive it. So our brand, Westman Atelier, we, we are becoming, we're working toward becoming refillable, which is a, it's a big undertaking and it's something we're completely committed to doing. And so these, the compacts will be the first thing to be refillable. We have a a package that we're working on and we we were doing doing research and trying to find the you know the most sustainable material to work with and it's basically the waste of sugar cane so mm -hmm. they take the waste of sugar cane and they make it into this this material but i said a thousand percent we're going to go with this this material so many people purchase things through Amazon and other uh, other companies, and you get all this plastic and boxes and all these different things. So if we can start taking these little baby incremental steps of actually changing, like you want to take, you know, this beautiful, because I, I love your packaging, and think about refilling, that's really where we need to be is to start thinking about, about that. I get invited to some of the most prestigious institutions, and... I've had parents show up and thank me, like, thank you for, you know, telling my, my child that they can do whatever it is that they put their mind to, because some of them have actually written notes or emails and said, hey, I wanted to be a biologist, but now I'm rethinking, or I'm, I was going to medical school, and I'm like, well, there's so many interdisciplinary programs today. You can have your MBA and your JV and focus on climate. You can you know, create a, a, your own path now. And, and that is really where, where we need to focus is getting the younger people 
to take the lead on this because this is going to impact for generations to come. I, I would be one of those parents thanking you so much if like you spoke at our school or so. I mean, just like I would want to watch you every day. It's so inspiring. <laughs> thank you. Passion Murray, thank you so much for being who you are and for um, saving the world. You are going to change the world. I can feel it. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. I'm so grateful. Can't wait to see you soon. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Cash. <laughs>